Hi, welcome back to the channel. My name is Tim Yoon, and today I want to talk about how you can decouple Swift UI from the persistence layer. So typically when we have a Swift UI app and using the MVVM architecture, we're going to have a view and then uh, inject in a view model just like that. The question is, how can we persist the data without changing the view model or the view itself, and therefore achieve a decoupling between the data service layer, which is an orange over here, uh, with uh, the view model. In other words, without changing any of the blue modules, can you just swap in uh, a mock data service or a user default data service or a Firebase data service or even a core data data service? This comes in very handy because often these data services change. So for instance, uh, a new framework could come out or the needs of the company uh, might change. Um, so let's look at how we can do that. And let's jump straight into Xcode. Uh, we're going to uh, today kind of skip over some of the view code and go straight into the data persistence layer as quickly as possible. But a little bit of explanation is necessary. So I've created an app here that uh, you, know, you can allow adding a user, let's say John, and there you go, and you can delete John, um, but there's no data persistence right now. So the model is simply a user that's identifiable and codable. It's gonna have a unique identifier and a name, which is a string. A view model, uh, it's gonna be a pri uh, published private set var users, array of users, which is initially gonna be uh, equal to an empty array. And then it's gonna have three, um, functions that are going to be used to access and modify users. So it'll be add user uh, and update user and delete user. So in order to, so just to show you what happens here and in, um, in the user list view, I'm going to try to open that up. There it goes. Uh, it takes in an observed object view model, user view model. Uh, and that's how the user list view works. And we're not going to get into the details of how that works. But as you can see, the user list view will get injected in a user's view model right here. So how can we do this such that um, we can modify the user view model in a way that uh, we no longer have to modify it after we uh, change the architecture of it? Well, the way we're going to do this is we're going to use combine and uh, dependency injection to make this work. So first we need a private data uh, var, sorry, let's just call it a let data service. And it's gonna be of type any data service like that. And then we're gonna need a private var cancelables and that's going to be uh, set to an instance of a set of any, having trouble typing today, any cancelable. And that's how we do that. And then we're going to inject this in into an initializer, ds. And it's going to be any data service, like so. And it's going to be self dot ds equals uh, data service that's been given to it. And we'll know um, that um, uh, the data service has been defined as a protocol down below. And this is the whole key to it all. And we're going to fix that error in a minute. But here's the protocol for data service. It's going to be an observable object. So it's going to be a class. It's got four functions. It's going to have the add, update, and delete functions, just the same signature as the um, we had above in the view model. It's going to have a function called get, which will then return any publisher. It'll be a, publish, a type erased publisher that publishes an array of user and an error. Okay, so that's how it works. And then we're going to create a mock data service based on this protocol. And it's going to have a at publish private var users, array of users. And the get function uh, is going to be implemented this way. Dollar sign users dot trimap. 
So this makes it a publisher trimap, and the trimap allows you to have an uh, an error. Uh, so we know this cannot create an error, but we need that in order to match the signatures. And then we're gonna uh, erase to any publisher, okay? And then the add, update, and delete functions are pretty straightforward and exactly the same as we had above. So users.append guardlet index equals users dot first index where dollar sign zero ID equals user dot ID else return. And then that's the found index then is used to set the user uh, array element. And then the delete is just using a remove add offsets that index set. Good, now we have that. We can go back up here now to the user's view model. And first thing I want to do is show you that uh, we're going to hook up the data service dot get with um, the uh, the vars right here, this published vars. And this is where you do it. You just say uh, sync, and that's a potential error. And then we'll just put in a fatal error. Uh, sorry, that doesn't work. Okay dot fatal and I have a little snippet that helps me to do that and then we're going to say uh, users and uh, then we're going to say self dot users equals users and then we're going to have to store this subscription into cancelables okay that's why we needed cancelables to store that subscription um, and then this sync uh, will then connect up the published elements from the ds.get into this users, okay? Now that we have that, we don't need this anymore. We're gonna just get rid of this and say, um, we're gonna say ds.add uh, user, perfect. We're gonna say um, ds.update uh, user, and we're going to say ds dot uh, delete, and that'll be uh, index set like that. Perfect. And one more thing we're going to do is we're going to give this a default variable. We're going to say this is going to be a mock data service. And once we do that, uh, it everything all the errors should go away. And we're waiting for that. The error is number zero. Very good. So now we can add something. We can say um, John like that. And then we can edit that and say John Smith. And it saves. We can add something else. We can say Mary uh, Doe, let's say. OK. And then we can delete that. All that works. OK. So as you noted, uh, I did not have to change uh, user edit view or the user list view at all. In fact, um, I didn't even have to change this because I gave this uh, user view model a default of mock data service, okay? So now this is fine, we like this, this is good. Um, but now what if we wanna go better than the mock data service now? And we wanna actually do uh, create a user default data service, which is the simplest. And for example purposes, that's what we're going to do. So for user default data service, um, I'm going to use the the um, strategy of, uh, of an ad published private for our users, an array of users, and then it's going to have a did set. So whenever this variable gets set, the save gets executed, okay? Save items, users, key, key. The key is just a string that we need as a unique string. And then um, we're going to use these functions that I had talked about before in my previous app, uh, uh, previous video that talked about how to save using user defaults. And these are generic functions that I can use to save something as long as it's identifiable and codable. I can also load and get back this array of uh, identifiable and codable uh, data. So now we're gonna say this, user default data service, uh, get, again, is the same thing, users 
that trimap, erase to any publisher, just like before. Users that append, users, um, sorry, to add, we do users that append, and to update, we do the same exact code as above uh, that we had before, and delete is the same. And what this does is it, it will modify uh, users, and then the did set will save that. Now on the initializers, um, users will initially be uh, initialized to a blank array, but immediately it will load using this uh, key, which is a unique identifier. Now that we have this declared, we can inject that into user view model right here. Because the DS, instead of giving it the mock data service as default, we're going to give it a user default data service like this. And so without changing these code, the view code, or in this case, without changing the user view model code at all, we're able to just make this one line change right here and the data persistence should work. So let's try it, add, we'll say John and save, and then we'll compile or build again, and then build was successful. And yes, this data has persisted. It did not go away like it did when we do this. So let me just go back to mock data service here. Mock data service, if it was a mock data service, uh, we can add uh, John, save it. And then the moment we build and refresh here, uh, this, as soon as this thing is done, uh, it goes away. It's, it's just totally volatile memory. But let's give it back to the user default data service again. And John is there, boom, is from our previously saved data. So in this fashion, you can build this out to use various different backends like Firebase or Core Data. It's a wonderful way to keep everything decoupled so you don't have to reach back into the view model again, or you don't have to reach back into the all the other code. So achieves that... Um, that uh, incredible decoupling, that uh, modular decoupling using the combine framework as well as dependency injection type of approach just to go back here. So the view never needed to be changed. The view model, after we made that initial change to accept an any data service protocol, then we could change from mock data service to user default without any change. And so that's uh, how you do it. Please uh, give me a like if you learned anything here today, and that'll encourage me to put out more videos. Thanks again. Have a great day.